SMU Mustangs coming off a historic season visiting the Bobcats of Texas State. It is week one of what will be a very different college football season. Hello, I'm Chris Budden. My colleagues, Anish Sharaf, Tom Lugamil, will join me in just a minute. We will see a lot of things out here today that we're not used to seeing on a college football Saturday. There will be masks, coaches, and myself included. There will be socially distanced sidelines. The refs won't be using traditional whistles. And the players are letting their voices be heard for causes bigger than football. And while all this is a very different scene than we're used to seeing, a lot is still the same. The competitiveness, the desire to play a season that, frankly, these players didn't even know would happen. SMU quarterback Shane Buchel told me it didn't hit him until just this past Monday when he looked at his team and said, oh my gosh, we're playing college football on Saturday. We are and we're excited. The one other thing that is different, I am here in San Marcos, Texas, but my colleagues, Anish Sharaf, Tom Lugamil, they are in Charlotte calling this game from a studio. Hey, gentlemen. Hey, Chris. It is a brave new world. And while the last six months have been trying, nothing brings us together like arguing over college football. Nothing unifies all of us like the argumentation and debate of this great game. For SMU, they're coming off a great season. The Boulevard last year, a boulevard of hopes and dreams. The Mustangs raced out to an 8-0 start, ranked 15th in the AP poll. They stumbled down the stretch, losing three of their final five, but still finished the season with 10 wins, their most since the days of the Pony Express. Go back to 1984 for the last time SMU won 10 games. A big reason for the renaissance on the hilltop, quarterback Shane Bouchelle. Well, when you've got a quarterback, you've got a chance. And this has been a remarkably productive player, particularly a year ago, almost 4,000 passing yards, 34 touchdowns. He's not going to wow you with arm strength or size or physical measurables, but he's accurate, he is poised, and he is a confident player that's an ideal fit for this scheme. He'll face a Texas State team that is a little shorthanded and that doesn't have a ton of depth. A number of players out because of contact tracing. They also have injuries on the offensive and defensive side. Tall order for the Bobcats today. It certainly is. You know, coaches worry about injuries coming out of fall camp. Well, now there's another gremlin in the system, and that is COVID-19. You take a look at these players out today. In fact, Texas State on offense will have to play offensive linemen at the tight end position with no active tight ends on the roster. Jake Spavital has it cut out for him in year two in San Marcos. We're back with the opening kick. Today, Texas Hill Country, the home of Bobcat Stadium in San Marcos, Texas. Capacity is 30,000 limited to just 25%, so no more than 7,500 people in the stands. 91 degrees, we have some precipitation. <laughs> if you know the backstory, when Tom Luganbill covers a game, there's always weather. Interestingly enough, Tom Luganbill is with me in the studio today, so Chris Budden has to bear the brunt of that. Yes, unfortunately. I spent seven years doing it. It's somebody else's turn now, Anish. Texas State won the toss. The Bobcats will receive. And Chris Nagar to kick it off for SMU. A Jordan Mask takes it out to about the 20-yard line, and Texas State will debut a new quarterback here in 2020. When you take a look Brady at Brady McBride, McBride. Coppell, Texas quarterback, uh, being named the starting quarterback was a dream come true. Always wanted to be a college quarterback as a kid. It's an exciting feeling being back on the field with everything going on. Only place I can clear my mind to just play ball. They're really excited about this young man in San Marcos. He's a dynamic athlete. Jake Spavital, the head coach, thinks he could change the face of their offense with his legs. Well, not there. He is devoured in the backfield by SMU. This was a Mustang defense that last year had 51 sacks, top five nationally. Yeah, and they've got the depth to replenish some of the losses off of that defensive front. This is a defense that has built some length. They're a little bit bigger. They're a little bit more physical. They are not going to change the approach. They're going to come after Texas State in what is to be a very inexperienced offensive line and a new quarterback in Brady McBride. Now McBride was not in the game there, and that was Jalen Gibson. 
and he has to retrieve the ball inside the 10 yard line and it sets up third and long everything that could go wrong has gone wrong early for the Bobcats Yeah, early on you got a little bit of jitters maybe a wet football with some precipitation on the field and you know just in the second play trying to get maybe some quarterback run action some zone read action out of Gibson there and and now you're really backed up in third and 20 not a lot of calls in the playbook three man rush it's a draw Brock Sturgis bouncing off the tackler got a block on the outside and he's got a first down and more the junior college transfer who began his career at Arizona State and was a standout at Allen High School in Texas. Well, it's a perfect play call versus what SMU was in. You had a two-man front, three-man front, and everybody else dropped an expecting pass. And Brock Sturr just avoiding some arm tackles. Nice little pinball and bounce to the outside right there. Getting out of a big hole in the first series. A gain of 35. McBride hit as he throws it. Still completes to Chandler Spates, the junior. And another first down for Texas State. You know, Anish, you mentioned to me before we came on air, how many off-balance throws would we see from Brady McBride today? What was the over-under going to be? And this is what he does. He just subtly moves to his left, leads the target low and in front of him, and a big gainer on first down. Here is Sturges falls forward for a couple. McBride, a Memphis transfer. This is his first collegiate start. And when we spoke to his head coach, Jake Spavital, Spavital said he reminds you a little of Johnny Manziel, who Spavital coached at Texas A&M. Well, oh, he's just gonna—he's gonna have a penchant for pulling a rabbit out of a hat, extending plays. Uh, you can move the launch point with him, and that's what makes him exciting. Just like you see right here as he gets flushed. Edge pressure. McBride takes off, takes another big hit, shy of the 30-yard line. And it sets up third down. Well, Tyler Vitt, the backup quarterback who was the starter a year ago, out due, due to COVID-19 testing. So they don't have an experienced backup. But you didn't have the athleticism with Vitt that you have with McBride. And I think that changes how you have to defend the offense when the quarterback can extend the play. Seventh play of the drive. McBride will keep it and take him down from behind unless he got rid of the ball. Got rid of the ball, but it looked like he pitched it right out of bounds and caught out of bounds. The referee is Marshall Lewis. Ruling on the field was a completed pass for a loss of a yard, so fourth down the and ten. Ruling on the field was that the receiver was out of bounds when he caught the ball. This is an incomplete pass. Okay, fourth incomplete down. pass. That's what I thought. I, he was standing on the white when he caught the, the football there, but... Uh, nevertheless, uh, as we showed Jake Spavital, the head coach, back to calling plays. And fourth and nine, he doesn't seem to be worried about down and distance here, Nish. They're going to go for it. Slings it near sideline. It's caught. Hey, Dell. Stiff arms his way inside the 10. A first down for the senior from Houston, Jeremiah Haydell. Haydell, tight route along the sideline, but it's the timing and the ball coming out, the accuracy, and look at Haydell attack the football, goes and gets the football, and then extends the play. The one thing about this offense that Brady McBride can do is get the ball out of his hand quickly with an inexperienced offensive line. He does it again, although Spates is gobbled up immediately, second and goal. What a drive. It was just a few plays ago. We were in third and 20 on your own five-yard line after a few blunders in your first couple of plays and completely rebounded here to put themselves in scoring position. A loss of two puts the ball at the eight. Third and 20, fourth and 10. Devil may care for Jake Spavital <laughs> to start this game. No question. McBride back to the air. Now buying time with his feet and wisely throws it away third down. So when you're in this position, you can't take a negative play. Brady McBride's a young player. You're in the red zone, all right? You're at home versus a team that you're an underdog to. Understand where you're at. Don't take yourself out of scoring position here. You've got to at least come away with three on this first drive. So avoid a negative play here if you're Brady McBride. You saw Jake Spavital a moment to go, assuming the play calling duties this year. They let go their OC from last year, Bob Stitt. 
on third and goal. McBride pressured again, running in circles, and nowhere to go, crunched at the 20-yard line. Harrison Loveless and Elijah Chapman, 40 and white, who his defensive coordinator said was one of the angriest people in Texas. Yeah, he is active and disruptive. And this is exactly what I was talking about that you cannot do as a young quarterback. Understand your field position, how critical it is that you don't put your kicking game in a bit of a hole. This is an entirely different field goal attempt than had you thrown the ball away and you get your 10 yards back. Second career field goal attempt for Allen Arona. A redshirt freshman. And he missed it. A shoots and ladders type of opening drive for Texas State. Uh, no question about it. The good news, you took some time off the clock. Bad news, you got to defend SMU coming back. Forty-two points per game last year. They're led by the best quarterback in the American Conference. Shane Bouchel, quarterback, Arlington, Texas. Man, we're finally ready to be back on the field as teammates and as one big great family. He came to Arlington. That's his hometown near Dallas from Austin where he was the quarterback for Texas and was a program changer last year. And on first down, he'll hand it off to T.J. McDaniel. Pickup of two. It's second and eight. Bouchelle a year ago set the single season school record for pass yards, passing touchdowns, and led this team to 10 wins for the first time since 84. There's the Juco transfer, Danny Gray. Boy, are they high on number five in white. Sonny Dykes, the head coach at SMU, called him the fastest football player he's ever been able to coach. And they're hoping he can come in, you know, potentially make up for some of that lost production. 111 catches a year ago from James Prochet, no longer with the Mustang. So some new faces around quarterback Shane Buchel. On third down, it's McDaniel. Hammerheads across the 35 for a first down. When these two teams played last year, SMU ran wild 390 rush yards. And McDaniel was supposed to redshirt. Yeah. So you can play in four games. He played against Texas State. Eight carries, 159 yards, three TDs. The redshirt plan ended right there. That's right. Bouchelle will keep it. Ambushed. And taken down for a loss. This is well played and well reacted to by Texas State along the defensive front. I think Shane Bussell, I like some of the wrinkles you're seeing. He makes the right call here. The edge defender commits to the back. They just do a nice job of replacing that edge defender with some other maroon jerseys. Uh, he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, so second and ten. There's McDaniel, has the 40, and sidesteps out of bounds at about the 43, gain of six, maybe seven, third down. I like the play selection here so far for Garrett Riley, the younger brother of Lincoln Riley, the Oklahoma head coach, and first year as a coordinator, an area they wanted to address is more balance in the run game, particularly on early downs, so that they don't become one-dimensional. And each, and their three losses last year, their combined rush attempts in those three games was the lowest they had all year long in all three games they lost. And they're missing their top two running backs, a couple of good ones, Xavier Jones and Kamen Freeman both moved on. McDaniel again, and he's across the 45. He's got a first down for SMU. One area, Lugs, where this run game is going to be helped. It's the offensive line. Right. Sonny Dyke said they're bigger, they're stronger, they're better. Four starters return. Four starters return. And, you know, if, if you talk to coaches coming off of a season and they had the choice to say, okay, you get all your skill guys back or you get to have all your front guys back, what are you picking? And they're going to take the front every single day of the week and twice on Sunday. Now you add the quarterback, Shane Buchel, into the mix, and you'll fill in the pieces around them. Especially in a year when you have not had as much time and much practice time. No question. And a flag down. Sun seems to be peeking out as well. 
You know, it's interesting. You hear that electronic whistle, and it's difficult to hear. I don't know if it at home. Three you're, game, offense, number seven, five-yard penalty, remains first down. If it's as faint to you as it is to us, but it's, again, the, the new world we're living in, electronic whistles. Yeah, again, they're taking all the measures and all the stops, so instead of a whistle where you might have some spit, yep. let's make it electronic. whose season was cut short by injury last year, but in eight games, he averaged more than 100 yards per game. Yeah, six touchdowns as well. When he's healthy, he is a physical specimen, a guy that's very difficult to contend with one-on-one. -on -one. Really nice job in the defensive secondary there for Texas State, keeping the ball in front of him, making the tackle, and limiting yards after catch. McDaniel motions out, empty set. Here's the blitz. Bouchelle read it, got rid of it. And he's got his tight end, Kylan Granson, galloping down the sideline. He's in for six if it stands. And from that expression, it appears it will come back. At the reception, personal foul, blindside block, offense number eight. 15-yard penalty, remains second down. Going to see this right after the catch. The officials avoid it, and right there. Now, when you define that rule, all right, one of the components is that the opponent can't reasonably defend themselves, and I think that clearly falls into that category. That's a good call. It looks on the surface like a good, solid block, but no way for the defender at Texas State right there to defend themselves. So it negates a 56-yard touchdown catch by Granson, who had a 58-yard touchdown catch against a Texas State last year. Now, this is a Bobcats defense that is thin. They only returned four starters of those four. One of their top corners out for the season with a torn ACL. Two of their top defensive linemen banged up one is out, another not expected to play much. They'll try the draw, and Texas State all over it. Samuel Obiang with the stop, and third and long coming up. I've been very impressed with what you just described as a thin defensive front thus far. They're a three-man base team. That most of their depth is at linebacker, but now you've got this team behind the change. You're third and 16. You've put SMU into an obvious passing down. I, I think this is an area where you can really utilize the strength of Shane Buchel, and that's his deep ball. And Robertson on the receiving end of many a deep ball last year. Go check down. McDaniel canceled fourth down. Tried to set up just a little swing out of the backfield to T.J. McDaniel there. And look at the maroon jerseys running to the football. Now your coaches are going to love to see that. That's something you coach off of tape the next day. The effort and you're getting to the football and making tackles. What a terrific defensive drive right there for Texas State. Christian Taylor of the Texas Tech transfer made the play defensively. Nagarda punted away. Jamari A. Sharid will let it bounce. And Texas State with good starting field position at its own 45-yard line. Another chance to see Brady McBride and the Bobcat offense. Spavital in his second season as Texas State's head coach. Three and nine last year, and this is ground zero in a lot of ways. They brought in 50-plus new players, yep. four new coaches, and Spavital assuming the reins for play calling offensively. 
Well, you know, when he first took the job, his first recruiting class, they were only allowed to sign seven players. Since that time, as you mentioned, 54 players have come into the program. And, you know, there's no magic wand. There's no quick fix. But now with grad transfers and the transfer portal, there's a variety of ways to get an influx of depth in your program quicker than ever before. So they feel like they've got a much better football team. All right, and now that he's gotten back to calling plays, he feels like he's back in his comfort zone. Second to drive after the first one ended with a missed field goal. There's the blitz from Denbo in pursuit of McBride, who's able to get rid of it, and it's dropped by Jamari A. Sharid. Trevor Denbo, 16 in white, moving back to that linebacker position. He'll be tasked with trying to fill some of the void left behind by Patrick Nelson, who was a human tempest for this defense last year. He was, but I, I still think with, with Trevor Dembo and then 50, Richard McBride, they've got linebacker talent and returning experience. On second down, McBride again moves the pocket. Throws over the middle a little behind Haydell. And it's third down. What did we say the over-under was going to be on throwing across your body or off balance? Six, right? Six. I said it's six. We're at two. We're at two. We're at two. All right. And again, those are dangerous throws, and sometimes those throws, especially if they're late, can lead to negative plays, can lead to turnovers. Got to be careful. Keep an eye on that with McBride today. Now the guys McBride watched and idolized growing up, Brett Favre, Johnny Manziel, Baker Mayfield. That's who he looks like. He looks like all of them. Got Johnny Football's number two. SMU bringing pressure. McBride's got to get rid of it. Low throw, incomplete at the feet of Sharid, and it's fourth down. Very difficult to get enough power on the ball when you're doing a sprint away screen to the sideline and you're retreating virtually in a, in a back pedal. Unfortunate, we got to start to see Brady McBride get his feet set and get the ball out with some power and follow through. Danny Gray back deep, as Luke's told you. Sonny Dyke said that's the fastest player he's been around at Juco transfer. And Seamus O'Kelly will punt it away, the Australian from the Gold Coast. This one dies inside the 25-yard line. Shell is back on offense after this. Welcome back to San Marcos, Texas. Coach football, they would like to tell you they like to have control over things. In a season like this, you have to give some of that away. A few of the things they can control, though, is the way that they have gotten creative with their protocols. SMU came on the buses today basically half-dressed out, already wearing their football pants. They went into the locker room for 10 minutes in shifts to put their pads on, their sidelines, distance, seating assignments by numbers to keep everyone safe. Bouchelle against the blitz has Reggie Robertson for a first down for their big play threat. You know, coaches are such creatures of habit. They're creatures of schedule. That's all they know, and it's their lives are built around it. Their teams are built around it, and now all of that goes out the window, and the adjustments you have to make minute by minute, by hour by hour, day by day, maybe the coaches have had to adjust more than anybody else. I thought I heard the whistle. There it is. And again, you mentioned it earlier, electronic whistle this year. Maybe not as audible at first. Replay initiated for the previous play. The ruling on the field for the previous play was a completed catch for a first out. All right, so the look at that last catch to Reggie Robertson. Are they looking for the catch or whether it was the line to gain? Take a look at it here. It's a slant, clearly a catch. So this is going to be a decision based off of line to gain. Very difficult and easy to tell from that angle. Robertson becomes the number one wide receiver this year with the departure of James Prochet. When he's been healthy, he's been a big time threat. Take another look. 
Clearly a catch. Clear, clearly a catch. I'm not sure what they're reviewing here. All right, so we're being told they are being, they're taking a look at the hit on the quarterback. One more look. Shane Buchel takes one right in the kitchen right here, just as he's delivering the ball, which you love to see, keeps his eyes downfield, know he's under duress. Is this a potential targeting foul? As we know, it is the attack with the crown of the helmet. If yes, we have a targeting foul. If no, we do not. Quarterback in the act of throwing the football is a defenseless player. Now, is he leading with the crown of the helmet? I believe so. I, I think he is here in this particular instance. I think this is not only a good review, but will likely be reviewed as a targeting foul. Yeah. And again, if it's an attack with the crown of the helmet, it doesn't matter if the player is defenseless or not. Right. There is no fault for targeting. Result of play was the first down. So we're in week one, Anish, and we have differing opinions. 0 for 1. On targeting. No targeting. That surprises me. That, that call really surprised me right there. Sione Tupu gets to stay in the game. Former UTEP minor, two years as a starter for UTEP. TJ McDaniel bounces to the outside, looking for the edge, and out of bounds near the 45. Forced out by Cordell Rogers, former high school quarterback. There's clearly a commitment, a renewed commitment to the run game here. I think that's only going to open some things up for Shane Buchel down the road, but I like what I'm seeing up front. And except for, except that. for that play, and that's how it always happens. Not surprising, though, from what we've seen from Texas State uh, on a thin defensive front. This is also a defensive front that's been very active. They've been very disruptive, and they've played on SMU's line, side of the line of scrimmage. SMU was terrific on third downs last year. It was a struggle for Texas State defensively. Bouchel's got time. And incomplete. Great coverage downfield, but now a flag. Pass intended for Tyler Page. Again, an East, a disruptive defensive front. Looked like we were going to see some pressure. We had somebody drop out. We still got some pressure, some twists up front. And you're going to see it right there on the right side of your screen. When you get your hands on the outside, that's Jalen Thomas, the left tackle. You get your hands on the outside, you start wrapping around the defensive end. You're going to get that call every single time. It's a good call and a terrific defensive stance by Texas State. So fourth and seven, and now listen, SMU last year offensively at times, you could set it to music. The marriage of Figaro, let it play. Now right now, both teams just out of sync. Maybe it's not having the amount of time you're used to. Maybe it's game one, but now from a synchrony standpoint, it's like a third grader playing a recorder for the first time. Punt that time by Nagar, downed inside the 20. On Labor Day, it's BYU and Navy meeting for just the third time. Reese Davis, Kirk Herbstreet will be on the call in Annapolis. Last meeting, 1989. And uh, here's a good little trivia question. The team with the most rush yards, most yards per rush, and most rushing touchdowns since 2008 is? Uh, Navy. Navy. <laughs> hey, listen. If you're going to play the triple option team, play them in the opener or play them in a bowl game, get as much time as you can to prepare. Texas State back at it. And that is Sturgis. He began his career at Arizona State, coming back home to Texas where he played at Allen High School. And that's a blueprint that's worked well for SMU, getting transfers who are coming back to Texas. It's one that Texas State is trying to replicate as well. Yeah, they certainly try to emulate it, and you end up 
bolstering your program with some better players. Sturgis again zigzags his way for a nice gain. Well, again, as I stated when we were talking about Texas State and, and you know having them having brought 54 new players in the last year into the program, you, you can replenish your roster. You can improve your talent, improve your depth through a variety of ways. It's not just through high school recruiting anymore, and it certainly seems to have upgraded Texas State. This is not the team maybe we expected to see today. Third and two after a gain of five, and miscommunication that time between Sharid and McBride. It's fourth down. I would imagine part of the challenge, though, with all the new players in a season like this where, yes, Texas State had five spring practices. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot this year. Well, they got their eyes on their kids. Yeah. It's hard to build chemistry, continuity, all those things that you want to infuse in your program when you have so many new faces and you just don't have the person-to-person -person time with them like you would. Especially when you have new coaches and maybe a shift in scheme as well. Fair catch is made by Gray at about the 30. Now Shane Bouchelle is a poster child for what SMU has done in the transfer market. When Chad Morris, Sonny Dyke's predecessor, took over this program, they had 64 out-of-state players. Right. And they wanted to make a concerted effort to recruit Texas. And you do that in two ways. You get high school kids, and you get guys like these, high-end players who went elsewhere, who then will transfer back to their home state. Well, and again, they upgrade your roster in talent, and particularly at the group of five level, because I think that's the difference that many may not realize that when you have a departure, oftentimes because at the group of five level, you're in more of a developmental phase, that next guy up may not be as talented as the guy you lost or that has graduated. So when you get that transfer to come in, it lessens the drop off. And Sonny Dykes has told me in the past, all these guys know each other. They played against sure. each other. They played with each other. Bouchelle throwing to Page close to the sticks. So when you're bringing in transfers, there is a semblance of continuity when they're all Texas kids. And they're all Texas kids. They've been through seven on seven before. They've gone through the camp and combine circuit and the sophomore, junior senior year in high school they're very familiar with each other i remember talking to shane bouchelle last year and i said how many times do you talk about texas high school football his answer all the time incomplete for robertson third and two i think smu has come into this football game with maybe a bit of a lack of respect for who texas state is on defense this is a veteran offensive line that probably didn't think Texas State was going to be as active or disruptive as they've been and as a result Shane Buchel has been under duress he's had to throw off balance and he has not been very accurate to this point. McDaniel picks up the first down and then bumped hard out of bounds by Brandon Looper. Now you bring up the the players transferring in and then not having all of the practice and not having the normalcy that we usually have in preparing for a football season and then you add in a new coordinator. So in this case, Garrett Riley, the offensive coordinator at SMU, he is a guy that you rely on those winter workouts and those spring workouts to try and gauge who your kids are. And when you miss that, it can kind of put you behind the sticks a little bit in terms of being at your best when you start the season. Garrett Riley, Lincoln Riley's younger brother. And when we spoke to him, he said he didn't try to change a whole lot First from what they had out. last year. SMU, this will be a 30 second timeout. Timeout by SMU. Rhett Lashley, who was the OC for SMU last year, mm -hmm. went to Miami. And uh, again, I would think for any new coach, given what we've dealt with, the uncertainty, the mm -hmm. climate the last few months, not an easy transition. No, it's not. And I think, you know, Garrett Riley uh, is smart to say, hey, listen, this is a very prolific offense, very productive offense a year ago. There's certainly components that we want to maintain within our structure, but we're, we're going to have a couple other wrinkles every now and then, too. And we're going to put our own stamp on it. But I think he's smart not to overdo it with a bunch of new stuff. Lincoln and Garrett Riley. Lincoln is the older brother, of course, the head coach at Oklahoma, the team in the Big 12 the last several years. And Garrett Riley spent last season, no, not just fishing, but he was <laughs> in the Sun Belt, actually, with App State, the yep. Sun Belt champion. So he got a look at Texas State. 
Oh, Shane Bouchelle getting a real look at this defense early. This was a defense that did not bring a lot of pressure last year. Only 13 sacks yep. all season. And they're lighting it up early. Uh, they did not bring pressure. They were not overly productive. Very few tackles for loss. But you see Braden Stringer there, number 33. He leads the charge. They've done a nice job, I think, of disguising pre-snap where their pressure is going to come from. And in doing so, they've got this SMU offense, particularly in the offensive line, on their heels. Behind the chains again. Three-man rush. Bouchel with a lot of time. Steps up. Finds Page. Texas State trying to rip the ball out. It'll be third down with just a few seconds to go in this opening quarter. I would say, Lugan Bill, it's been a surprise. Nobody scored. Nobody scored. And I'll tell you right now, the way the game is being played and the pace it's being played at, Texas State has an edge on defense right now. Just the third meeting all time between these two schools. The first at Bobcat Stadium. Texas State put together an impressive opening drive. That was their best scoring chance. Alas, it ended with a missed field goal. The second quarter here at Bobcat Stadium, home to Texas State on third and 10. SMU with the football and Shane Bouchel threads the needle to Reggie Robertson in plus territory. It'll bring up fourth down, still well shy of the marker. I just like the plan. Zach Spavital, the defensive coordinator for Texas State, the brother of head coach Jake Spavital, he said it. We've got to do things pre-snap and change post-snap to get Shane Buchel off the mark, get him off schedule. So far, they've done that. He wants to get the ball out quick. He wants to throw it on time. That hasn't been a luxury for this SMU offense. Credit this defense for Texas State. Shane Bouchelle, who can pooch punt, will attempt one here. And a fair catch is made inside the 15-yard line. We expected a lot of firepower, especially from SMU, which offensively was one of the best teams in the nation. Yep. What's behind the slow start offensively? Erratic accuracy for that first-year starter right there, Brady McBride. He's had some open guys that he's missed. He's thrown off his back foot some. You can tell he's a dynamic athlete. And then maybe more importantly, the offensive line for SMU is struggling to hold up versus the various looks that Texas State has provided on defense. They've got to get their offensive line short up. And this young man right here, while he's talented, has to settle down and become more accurate. McBride got rid of this one quickly. And it's Calvin Hill. You talk about a great name for a running back from Texas. Calvin Hill, great cowboy back in the day, four-time Pro Bowler. And for a younger generation, they know his son very well, NBA Hall of Fame, yep. Grant Hill. He, he is he's the, the little pinball. He's the lightning to the thunder of Arizona State transfer Brock Sturgis. Hill's a redshirt freshman, rips off a nice run. And it brings up second down. Tackle made by Jimmy Phillips. All five foot seven, 168 pounds. I, I like this game plan in these first couple of plays. You get yourself out of the hole, get the run game settled. They're coming to the line of scrimmage fast. Little east-west shake again by Hill. And another first down, so Calvin Hill has come in and been a bit of a catalyst. He makes number two, Cam Jones, miss in the hole. This should have been a tackle for maybe no gain. Instead, the shoe comes off. Nonetheless, you convert for a first down. SMU did lose a lot defensively, especially up front. McBride running in circles, gets away from Cox, and he's intercepted. Picked off by Jimmy Phillips. Well, that was another off-balance throw. He had a play <laughs> like that in high school, which actually worked. Yeah. But again. What did I tell you when we went to break last time? You said an interception's <laughs> coming. You said an interception is coming. I said that guy's going to throw the ball to the <laughs> other team. And listen, he's going to make his fair share of exciting plays. He's going to get out of trouble, pull a rabbit out of the hat. But then he's also going to throw across his body, late back over the middle of the field, and somebody's going to undercut it. 
And that, those are the plays you got to avoid. You're going to make errors in each. There's going to be issues early on in your first game, but you can't make you can't make the catastrophic area. I know how much you love this, right? Turnover chains, turnover <laughs> swag. SMU, of course. Highland Park, the Hilltop. Turnover bottle service. <laughs> that penalty is declined. Personal foul, illegal block below the waist. Defense, number 53. 15-yard penalty to be assessed from the spot of the foul. SMU football. Got the poppers, the confetti. Where are the balloons? We need balloons. I don't think you can have balloons because you've got to inflate them, right? you got to blow them up. Well, they could be pre-inflated, tied to the bench with strings. Well, I'm saying, again, you're blowing them up by blowing into them and with COVID and No, a machine that. blows them up. Oh, you know, a helium machine. machine okay. you know. With every turnover, you get a balloon, bottle service, and then you release the balloon into the air. Penalty was on uh, Eddie Rivas. Or rather, Garrett Madison. It was on an SMU player, so they'll be backed up here. Back inside their own territory. First carry of the game for Ulysses Bentley. He's the big home run threat in the backfield. <laughs> last year, as Gemmer Daniels makes the stop, last year you had Kamen Freeman, who was the big power back, and Xavier Jones was an all-conference running back who was a touchdown machine. They missed the thump that yeah. Freeman had last year, right. but Bentley certainly brings... A skill set where he can take it to the house on any play. Bouchelle, 8 out of 10, 53 yards. Floats one downfield. It's hauled in by Robertson. Fourth catch for Reggie Robertson, who began his career at West Virginia. Really good patience and poise and keeping your eyes downfield. If you're Shane Buchel here, you got some time, you can navigate the pocket, you put a little air on this ball, give, give Robertson a chance to, to catch it. One of the few times we've seen a three-man rush from SMU, from Texas State, it backfires on him there. Bentley out of the backfield. And dropped at the 35-yard line. Tackle made by Kevin Anderson. Kevin Anderson, number five on the perimeter there, did a really nice job not only pursuing the football, but leveraging the football, not avoiding the missed tackle in the open field. That's what's made defensive football so difficult, Anish, in this day and age. You've you got, you got to defend vertically, and you got to defend horizontally, and you got to tackle premier athletes in space. Second and eight, here's the blitz. Bentley picked it up. Caught downfield and then dropped. Austin Upshaw could not hold on. Upshaw came to SMU as a quarterback, and it's third down. Looks like the official on the sideline near the pylon. Now, that's clearly not a catch. The field judge here, wow. though. Well, that's not a catch. He never completed it. No, the field judge here marks it as a complete catch. They're going to look at this. They have to. Wow, from the naked eye, it didn't seem that that was a catch. It didn't seem he ever possessed it where he could make a football no, move. No question. The original the angle and the ball going over the shoulder. Out of bounds, it will be returned to the fumble spot. First down. We did see uh, another angle of that to see if he actually completed the act of the catch, secured the football. SMU calls a play, Bentley into the end zone. And a touchdown for SMU, so that was a fast review. Very. The call on the field was upheld, and Bentley bursts into the end zone. Prior to the snap, Texas State called a timeout to challenge the previous play. Moving on the previous play was a completed catch, followed by a fumble forward up bounce. So, a couple of things here. Number one, very smart by that man, Jake Spavital, to force the issue and at least get this reviewed, but also on the SMU sideline. Garrett Riley, Sonny Dykes, the head coach at SMU, they knew they needed to get this ball off. Oh. Now, something to remember, and this is critical, 
when officials watch this play, we watch slow motion. Mm -hmm. They are not judging it in slow motion. Correct. In the official's estimation, replay distorts time. Mm -hmm. So they are watching this in one motion. Yes, you're watching right now in slow-mo, and it looks like, okay, maybe he didn't come down with it. They're trying to make the determination in real time if it's a catch. Well, and they're also trying to make the de determination of two different things. Let's look at this in real time. And they're looking at two things here with this. Was this an incomplete pass or was it a secured catch and a forced fumble where the ball then went out of bounds? And we see with the field judge, he's ready to place the ball out of bounds, assuming we have a fumble. Having seen plays like this many times in the past, this always seems to go as an incomplete pass. Because to me, it's so difficult to determine when the ball is being juggled. Have you completed the act of the catch? Well, here's you, you bring up a great point, though. What you're trying to determine. Field is confirmed. Followed by a forward, resulting in a first down. They will discharge the timeout. So essentially, right there, and it had some audio issues there with our, our head referee. They did rule it a catch, then ruled a fumble, as opposed to just an incomplete pass, which it's interesting here because he, the ball's kind of juggling. He's trying to secure it. That's, that's a tough call right there, man. And again, this is a situation where you say, do you default to the ruling on the field? But they confirmed the call. Yes. The verbiage wasn't the call stands. It was confirmed. So they watched that, and clearly they saw more evidence than you and I did. Yes. It works out for Sonny Dykes, first and goal for SMU. Bentley's touchdown obviously comes off the board. Texas State will be charged a timeout. That's to Jordan Mass, number 13. He made a great play on the ball, on the receiver. Just doesn't go their way this time. From the six, Bentley again, burst to speed, and he'll touch the Happy Isles. Ulysses Bentley with his first career TD. Nice little bounce to the edge here. There is a flag. By the time we're done, he may have to score his first career touchdown three times. Yeah, that's exactly right. I think I may know where this flag is coming from, too. Result of the play is the touchdown. There is no foul. Result of the play is the touchdown. There is no foul on the play. Try for point. Thought we might potentially get a hold on number eight, Reggie Robertson, there. Nonetheless. And again, making the error that leads to the drive that puts points on the bo board for SMU is something Texas State cannot afford to do if they want to stay in this football game. Megar knocks in the point after those were adventures last year for SMU. It's Ulysses to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Texas State. That last drive resulted in a touchdown for the Mustangs, but Chris Budd and Sonny Dykes wasn't too thrilled. Yeah, he was upset. He said to the refs, you guys did not hear him try and call a timeout, so why did you guys give it to him? It's the greater sense of trying to communicate with these mask on. You can't hear him call it. You can't hear the electronic whistles very well as either. Chris, that's a great point, and you know, we've noted that it, a penalty has been called and you don't hear the whistle and so Sonny Dykes isn't necessarily wrong there you know when you can't hear the communication and, and, it, and that was one thing Jake Spavital and he did say to us though he goes we're going to be able to talk to our players so much more freely and communicate more freely but clearly in that particular instance Sonny Dykes doesn't feel like it was clear at all and you and I again Chris is on site at Bobcat Stadium you and I are watching in a studio in Charlotte Basically what you folks are watching at home, 
it's hard for us to hear that whistle at times too. It is. You know, really the differences are the variety of angles that we're getting, but the sound is essentially the, the same. Point. Calvin Hill on the carry. And we go back to Chris. Guys, you would think with only 25% capacity for fans that it would actually be very quiet here. But since the band is allowed and the cheerleaders are allowed, they're still pumping music through the speakers. It still hears and sounds like a football game. Chris, from, from sight, are, are you noticing a big difference in how loud you can hear the whistle? Yeah, I cannot hear it that well. And that said, for as quiet as it is, I can't hear the other sidelines either. It is very, I almost hear it more through my IFB and the TV than I do just the natural sound of the whistle. Uh, that's very interesting. And right, that's what the players and that's what the coaches hear too. Third and two. Hale. Turbos ahead for a first down for Texas State. You know, it's interesting. You look at these two offensive approaches and the coaches and their coaching trees and where they came from, and it's all some version or iteration of the air raid and the spread and some of the power run game that's sprinkled in. These Texas State and SMU scheme-wise are very, very similar offensively. McBride will tuck and run. And tracked down by Cox from behind. A bright spot offensively for Texas State has been the run game, which reeked of bovine fertilizer a year ago. There's no question in the offensive lines played really well. Now you're getting some tempo. Here comes Hill. And cuts a jagged path to midfield. Calvin Hill has done a nice job providing a spark to this run game. Well, he has, and I think the tempo and the ability for Texas State to get positive gains on first down in the run game has allowed for them to open up the playbook when you've got second and third and short. First and ten from midfield against a three-man rush. McBride again has time to Hill out of the backfield. And he runs into the embrace of Richard McBride. What an inspirational story. McBride is a sixth year senior, began his career at Auburn, had a devastating neck injury to the point where Auburn doctors declared his career to be over. Right. Got a second opinion, still couldn't get cleared. Got a third opinion in Dallas, finally was cleared to play. He was mowing lawn back in Troy, supervising detention at his old high school while helping out with the football team, and then got word he could resume his football career. And last year with SMU, he was the leading tackler. Uh, yeah, this is an elite player coming out of high school. He's an Under Armour All-American, uh, a, a top 150 player for us. And so he's been well-traveled. He's got the opportunity to get to play this great game once again. And as you mentioned, a great year a year ago, gets the sixth year. But right now, he needs to get this, this crop of Mustangs stopping the run because Texas State's having their way up front. On third down, open receiver, it's Spates. And Texas State moves the chains again. Armani Johnson on the stop. I, I, would, I would imagine if you asked Jake Spavital, the head coach and play caller, if he thought coming into this game that they would be as successful on the ground as they've been, if they would be as productive in the offensive line as they've been, he'd probably tell you no way if he was being honest. They're averaging almost five yards a carry. McBride stands in the pocket momentarily, now dances. The happy feet. And completes downfield to the 10-yard line. T.J. Graham, the junior from Mansfield. As a riverboat gambler, when your quarterback has flushed the pocket, he's on the move. The deep guy, rule of thumb, has to come back to the quarterback. That's what we saw that time right there, securing the football. Very accurate throw. Travis Graham making a play, putting this team in scoring position. A red zone opportunity. Texas State struggled last year. McBride backpedals, throws off his back foot, flag down, incomplete. Going to get a defensive holding play. It's going to help Texas State maybe get a little closer to that goal line. Oh, 
Holding. Defense, number 23. Forward pass, beyond line of scrimmage. At the distance of the goal line. Automatic first down. Well, they get Brandon Stevens, who came to SMU from UCLA, where he was a running back mm -hmm. with the Bruins. I'll tell you, that was a smart play right there by Brady McBride. You look at this, 13 touch touchdowns on 29 possessions, just abysmal. This has got to be an area where you got to capitalize and improve if you want to get past the three win mark. Sturgis ran into a roadblock, second and goal. Anish, one of the things I want to point out about that previous play, despite the hold, if you recall the last time this offense was in this position, the quarterback took a sack, took him out of field goal range, you missed the field goal, you come away with no points. That time, Braden McBride was smart, didn't like what he saw, threw the ball out of bounds, lived to play the next down. That makes it second and goal. Got to remember, Memphis transfer making his first career start at QB. McBride looking for six, throws it up. And it's incomplete. Intended for Marcel Barbie, the junior college transfer. Chase Cromarty going up, extending, and it, it looks, it looks like Barbie's got a chance. Oh boy, that's Ooh. awfully close. That is. That foot comes down, and if they ruled that he had possession when that foot comes down, that's a touchdown. That might be a touchdown, Luke. May very well be. That's one you got to look at, don't you? In this area of the field, you absolutely have to. Uh, they'll keep playing. Third and goal. Handoff. Sturgis angles in. And Texas State a PAT from tying the game. Wasting no time waiting on a review. Texas State and Brock Sturgis, the Arizona State transfer. They're snapping the ball and they're going. That, that was a, a really well executed, smartly played drive, not only by the quarterback in Brady McBride for Texas State, but the offensive line owned that series for the Bobcats and the run game getting underway. Arona on for the PAT to tie. And the Bobcats of Texas State have tied this game at seven. Rock Sturgis, third stop. It all began in Tempe. He's in for six in San Marcos. Tied at seven after a rushing touchdown from Brock Sturgis. And a Shroff, Tom Luganbill, Chris Budden at Bobcat Stadium. The run game for Texas State night and day from a season ago. Well, when you really think about all the components, look at these numbers from a year ago. And then today, what we're seeing is a team that is lining up on first and second down, averaging almost five yards a carry, and they look like they are dominating the SMU front. There has not been an answer yet or an adjustment uh, from SMU. And then conversely, we've seen the exact opposite. SMU came into this game, four or five starters returning in the offensive line, and Texas State has had their way with the defensive front. That's been the biggest surprise because SMU with the O-line, that was supposed to be a strength. Texas State came into this game shorthanded on its defensive line. Defensive line and in the offensive line. Remember, because of COVID and because of some positive tests and some contact tracing, they've had to take offensive linemen Texas State has and move them to tight end just to put their roster together. Flag is down. A procedure call will give SMU the ball at the 35. Be interesting to see what the answer is here for SMU. Can they sustain a drive? Can they make some big plays? We haven't seen explosive plays from this offense like we've been accustomed to. team. I rule the ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. For SMU and Sonny Dykes, this is also a season where you're not sneaking up on anybody. Everybody knows you won 10 games this year. Everybody knows how good your quarterback is. T 
C.J. McDaniel on first down. You only get to be average Joes once that first year. You're, you're not the underdog after that. Yeah, in offseason, they catch on to you a little bit, start studying you and take you a little bit more serious. And then you'll get number 91 right there, Jordan Rebels. That's the thing that we've seen from this defensive front. They have played off blocks and they have made tackles in the backfield. The Bobcats today starting just one player, Jaron Morris, a cornerback who started last year. Nice run for McDaniel. He takes it all the way to midfield and moves the chains. A little misdirection off the, the jet sweep. Now he's running outside zone with a slight cutback. Nice gain on an early down. McDaniel again picks up five more. Look at the play selection, Anish, on this drive. I'm not so sure that there wasn't a bit of a tongue lashing on behalf of the offensive line coach uh, at SMU uh, on that sideline telling his guys, you guys got to get, start getting after it up front. SMU came into this game a three-touchdown favorite. Tied at seven late in the first half. Texas State bringing some edge pressure. Bouchelle. Downfield, incomplete for Gray, who had his man beat. It's a nice over-the-top throw. Just couldn't quite catch up to that football. That's why they call it a game of inches. And that's the speedster we talked about, the junior college transfer. Sonny Dykes, the head coach at SMU, called him the fastest player that he's coached. Bentley checks in a tailback here on third down. Mustangs three out of six today, 44% last year. Wide open, Rashi Rice, who really shined down the stretch a year ago as a true freshman. Yeah, he's a guy that just makes plays and he's, he's a smooth route runner. Tax the technique, one jab step, and then out of the break, you see him explode. Really well thrown ball. And again, that's what Shane Michel wants to be. He wants to be an on time passer. A gain of 24. Now Bentley picks up nine, second and one. You know, you get that big pass, you get the first down, you run to the line of scrimmage, and you snap the ball immediately. And that's that edge that you have with tempo. Jaquel Pierce. The injured Bobcat senior out of Duncanville. He was a reserve lineman the last couple of years. Played some O-line too early in his career. Time out for an injury. Time out on the field. Uh, that reaction doesn't offer promise. We'll step aside with 404. All right, Matt, I saw that Army had a 99 play drive, something like 19 plays, took up 12 minutes of <laughs> clock today. <laughs> Bentley makes a man miss, and he's in again. Woo! Little B button, Anish. See, Bentley hit the cut back here and then has the vision right there to jump cut and then gets vertical and downhill immediately. I believe that's right trigger, not B-button. Oh, right trigger. Yeah, you might be right. I'll tell you what, this, this Bentley, Ulysses Bentley, he's different than T.J. McDaniel. T.J. McDaniel's kind of going to be what he is. He is what you see, but this guy's a dude. Sione Tupo down for Texas State. We'll step aside once again. Texas State coming back here in San Marcos, Texas. You're going to see the injury occur right here to Tupo, number 55. And it doesn't look like anything in these truly happens to him. You see him go down just off of that push, and the offensive line tight end ends up laying on top of him. But there's really no injury to, to determine what caused that there. 
PAT by Nagar is good. SMU missed seven extra points last year, up 14 to seven. And you see Tupo go down. We saw Jockel Pierce go down earlier. The drop off from the ones to the twos, severe for Texas State. It's huge. Um, you just, they haven't built the program up in terms of a depth uh, standpoint to be able to withstand either significant injuries, but of course also coronavirus and those that cannot play. So what happens is, is the drop off in talent, it, it can be pretty severe and it can really affect your ability to produce. What has Ulysses Bentley the fourth given SMU today? Explosiveness, the ability to make people miss in the hole and in the open field, the ability to bounce the play to the outside. He's their speedster, he's their home run threat. Texas State to take it out at the 25. Sunday, an NBA doubleheader. The Bucks, the one seed in the East, down 3-0 to Miami. Is Giannis just a Pippin, as our arch Richard Jefferson tweeted? I don't know. Meanwhile, James Harden and the Rockets look to go up 2-0 on LeBron and the Lakers. Harden 36 last night in Houston's game one win. Brady McBride will throw here on first down, looking for Sturgis, and that is ruled incomplete. Looked awfully close for a moment to a backwards pass. It was a forward pass, incomplete. I, I do think it was a forward pass. It was just a poor throw, and again, it's all about footwork with McBride. When he's been off the mark, when he's been inaccurate, his feet, he's off balance. He's throwing across his body, and right there, if he just sets his feet, turns, and throws the wide route right there, he's all set. But instead, he's leaning away, he's drifting away, and it's tough to be accurate when you're doing that. Six out of 15 today, 81 yards and an interception. Calvin Hill breaking free. And he's close to the 45-yard line. They mark him down at the 44, a gain of 19. Again, he's been their go-to guy, diminutive in stature, but at the same time, the result of a lack of ideal measurables is you can't get a clean shot on him. He never takes a direct shot. He's just so slippery between the creases. Hale again, using the shake, and Cox got him by the waist and brings him down after a short game. Well, so far, we haven't seen, you know, Jake Spavital, the offensive coordinator, head coach, he wants to be an 11 or 12 personnel guy. That's going to be one back, one tight end, and one back and two tight ends. And so we haven't seen a lot of these extra offensive linemen that are suiting up as tight ends today. They've been mostly three and four wide. Here's the blitz. Dangerous throw, incomplete. Donald Clay nearly had a chance at an interception. Well, there's no hesitation. He's going to pull back and wing it, that's for sure. It looked like his intended target, Shereed, was expecting an interception. He went and played defense right off the bat right there instead of attacking the football. So third and eight. Here's Hill. He's got midfield, and he's going to be close. Fourth and one after a seven yard run. 220 to go in this opening half, and the offense will stay out on the field. I like it. Hey, listen, you're winning at the line of scrimmage. You've run the ball at will. You've put yourself in position here. You're in the game. Number 90, Jake Lynch, in there to block. Sturgis, first down and more. Down the sideline, bumped out of bounds near the 25-yard line. The ground game reborn for Texas State in 2020. That's bold. No hesitation on Jake Babadol's part. Continuing to run the ball, 
a decimated, inexperienced offensive line in Texas State that was atrocious a year ago in the run game has had their way here in the first two quarters. And the Arizona State transfer with a big gainer putting this offense back in the red zone. 59 seconds, 159. Nine seconds added back on. You brought up. You brought up some of the personnel losses up front. The tight end position decimated by either injury or contact tracing. Number 90, a D lineman, Jake Lynch, was in on that last play. McBride, happy feet. Ball pops out. And Texas State able to recover. McBride fell on it. Let's be smart, young buck. We, now that's ground causing that ball to come loose. But again, understand the awareness of where you are on the field, how how premium points are going to be for this offense. You're only down by a touchdown. You're going into the second quarter right here. Be smart with the football, Brady McBride. If I credit Denbo with the sack on second down. Sturgis pinballing off a defender. And brought down by Richard McBride. Third down now, no gain on the play. Or a short gain on the play. Got away, come away with three here at least. Understanding that SMU will get the ball coming out of the locker room to start the third quarter. Can't allow this to be any type of a 14 or a 10 point swing by not scoring any points here if you're Texas State on offense. Two timeouts left for Texas State. Let's see if SMU brings pressure. They do. McBride, end zone. Flag is down. Intended for the six foot two Barbie. Covered by Stevens. Only question on that call, Anish, is was the ball catchable? Defense, number 23. 15 yard penalty. First down. Huge. Huge. Absolutely huge. And. It puts you in a position with plenty of time on the clock to, to have the full slate of plays at your disposal. You can still run it. Tenth play of the drive. McBride, end zone again. Touchdown! Haydell brought it in with one hand. This, Anish, was a spectacular display of focus, concentration, and then maybe most importantly, ensuring that you get down inbounds and not have that ball come loose on you. <laughs> Armani Johnson was so close to knocking that ball away. I mean, his hand swiped right by it. Good call by the official right on top of it there. Jeremiah Haydell. To complete a catch for a touchdown. Previous play is under further review. They're going to look at this. Well, this one's not going to take that long. We're 0 for 2 already, though. I still maintain the correctness on the targeting call on each. <laughs> Inbounds. What a grab. Secures it. Watch Johnson's hand swipe by the ball. But you know what? When you're Texas State, you're the underdog. You got to make plays like that to be in this ballgame. Any chance this is overturned? I don't. I don't see how it could be. Jeremiah Haydell, a senior from Houston, 32 catches last year, tops amongst all returning wideouts. That was a position where they really infused talent through the transfer route in the offseason. Well, it's interesting because Armani Johnson there is holding the left arm all right, of Haydell down while the right arm of Adele goes up to secure the football. But what you notice in that with that catch 
is how Andrew quickly really on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Yeah. How quickly, how quickly he secured the ball to his rib cage and his chest. So he made the call easy for the official in the corner. And a PAT from tying this game and the final minute of the first half. Fourteen all. Now Sonny Dykes, mask on, so you can't see all the emotions. I don't think many expected a game this close no. at this juncture. Absolutely not. And, and now you've got Big Mo with you. You know who Big Mo is? Big Mo Menem going into the locker room. This was a must-have touchdown. So that you have some confidence. You know you're going to start out on defense to start the third quarter. And we've got a heck of a football game here. Well, we got a good one on Labor Day in Annapolis. BYU and Navy, only the third meeting between these two schools. BYU had to scramble to fill out its schedule. Lost a lot of games and yeah. in some ways still filling out their schedule. Sure. I, and, and listen, they, you know, they got an exciting quarterback in Zach Wilson. If you haven't had a chance to see him play, uh, actually had BYU twice last year in their, their win against Tennessee early in the year. And then they come back home and beat USC. So there's some exciting components coming back versus a very difficult, strong run game in a triple option Navy midshipman. Meanwhile, Navy was one of five teams in the American last year that won at least 10 games. Yeah. I don't think people around the country realize just how strong the AAC was last year. Well, and we're going to have more opportunities to see these teams more than ever now without two Power Five conferences playing football. Robertson with a nice return. SMU two timeouts, 26 seconds to go in the half. Now the Mustangs were one of those five, and again, rankings aren't everything because it depends where teams fall, but if you're keeping score, and we do, the AAC finished with four teams ranked in the top 25. Mm -hmm. That's three more than the ACC, two more than the Pac-12, one more than the Big 12. Yeah, yeah, and, and listen, you've got teams like Cincinnati, like UCF, that, that we've seen SMU a 10-win team uh, there's some good football being played. Memphis has their quarterback back, back in Brady White. Bouchelle keeps it faked out her cameraman. Out of our screen, <laughs> close to the 33-yard uh, line, second down, and it appears SMU will just take that into halftime. The Mustangs will get the ball to begin the third quarter. And Bouchelle getting up slowly. If you're going to run the football, hand it off. A bit of a surprise. One half here in the books at Bobcat Stadium, all tied at 14. Matt Berry, Jesse Palmer, take it away, young man. One half of play in the books, and we already have the play of the year. Jeremiah Haydell, a one-handed touchdown grab as we check out the first half stats brought to you by PlayStation 5. Texas State could not run the ball a year ago. Boy, what a turn in the season opener. It's really been the difference in their football team. They have had their way with SMU's defensive front running at will, and it's why they're in this football game. 144 rush yards, almost double what they averaged per game last year. SMU will receive the third quarter kickoff. The speedy Danny Gray back deep. And Jacob Bates to kick it away. Bates, a former college soccer player at Central Arkansas, then went to Arkansas before coming to Texas State. Gray's going to run it out. Has the 20. Stiff arm across the 30 and out of bounds as we check in with Chris Budden. 
number five. Danny well, Jake Brady. Spavadol told me at half that he thought that Brady McBride was a little all over the place early on. He contributed to nerves. He said, I like how he's settled down. I like how we're competing. He's a little concerned with depth because they've had some guys go down at the D-line, so they've moved a fullback over to start on the defensive line. Some interesting stuff for SMU because they want to stay socially distanced in the locker rooms. They split it up. Offense used one locker room. Defense used another locker room. Sonny Dyke spent the first part of halftime working with the defense, then moved over and worked with the offense the second part of halftime. Teams taking all sorts of measures to stay safe and stay healthy. With Tom Luganbill and Ishraf back in our Charlotte studios, Chris Budden down on the field at Bobcat Stadium. I would agree with you. The runner stepped out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Previous play is under further review. I would agree with Jake Spavital's assessment of his quarterback. I mean, they just exciting, but all over the place in that first half. So now they're going to see where Gray went out. To follow up on what Chris said about all the measures SMU is taking, when we talked to their coaching staff, we got a sense that they feel, one, they have a really good team. And their best chance at success it sounds simple, is showing up to game day with your best players eligible. And in this climate, that is easier said than done. And if you look at what they've done really since March, they didn't have an in-person meeting until just this past Thursday as we try to pinpoint where Danny Gray stepped out. Ruled out at the 27-yard line. The ball struck the ground in the end zone, untouched by a Team B player. This results in a touchback. Ball will be placed at the 25-yard line. First down. Sonny Dykes trying to get an explanation. We're all trying to get an explanation. I don't know what to make of that call. Shane Bouchelle will throw here on first down. And it's Rashi Rice for a gain of three. The sophomore coming off a very impressive freshman campaign. He really stepped up when Reggie Robertson went down a year ago. Had a big game in the loss to Memphis. Had some huge catches and a triple overtime comeback win against Tulsa. Shell down the seam. Gray with the catch in stride. And SMU in Texas State Territory. Nice touch, good decisiveness and timing. What I like about this throw from Shane Bouchel is he throws the guy open. You got an underneath defender dropping and a trailing defender behind him. It's the only place the ball could have gone. Now Ulysses Bentley, who ran for a couple of touchdowns in the first half. Scampers out of bounds, chased out by Kingsley Oniroha. That deep ball by Bouchelle impressed Sonny Dykes when Dykes was the head coach at Cal and Bouchelle was just a freshman at Texas. Yep. Upshaw, converted quarterback, lowers the shoulder and tumbles out of bounds. You know, one thing about the deep ball, you may not have the strongest of arms, but it's the ball placement and the accuracy that you really like. It's where the ball ends up. He gives his guys a shot and, a, and an opportunity to catch the football uncontested. Bentley on first down for a couple. You were about to see there. Those were going to be the highlights from that 2016 Cal-Texas shootout. Now people forget Shane Bouchelle set a lot of freshman records at Texas before being beaten out by Sam Ellinger later in his career. He's got time. Incomplete too high for Granson. It's third down. You know, he's he's been a well-traveled guy. He's been around a lot of different offenses, so he's absorbed a lot of football. He's a smart and heady guy. 
that I think players respond to. One of those one of those players that when he steps on the field, steps in the huddle, people around him get better. Last February, when he was still in Texas, he would drive to SMU to watch practice, get to know his teammates. Yep. Bentley with an opening and surges inside the 10, first and goal. Ulysses Bentley may end up as the lead back on this team before all is said and done. Well, he's clearly the most talented of the backs that they have in their stable. He gives them the most big play explosiveness. And now we're starting to see this offensive line start to come together for uh, SMU. Here's Bentley. Hit hard at the nine yard line. Jaron Morris wearing number zero. Baby J laying the lumber. He's not very big, but he plays big. The best corner on this team, not just in pass coverage, but also in run support. He's going to be one of those guys that's going to come up and smack you. Not very tall, can get picked on a little bit in coverage for some of these bigger targets on the outside. His head coach calls him the scrappiest player on the team. McDaniel, stiff arm to the outside and in for a touchdown. Off the draw right here. Nice setup versus the three-man front. T.J. McDaniel just bounces the ball to the outside. Outrunning pursuit. What an important opening stanza in the third quarter after Texas State took all the momentum in the locker room at halftime. T.J. McDaniel has four career rushing touchdowns, all against Texas State. One just now, and three last year when he exploded for a buck 59 on just eight carries. The last score, giving SMU the lead. for SMU. That was their game plan and their mode of success against Texas State last year. SMU won that game 47-17. 390 rushing yards in that game. <laughs> Anish Shroff, Tom Luganbill, Chris Budden with you on a Saturday afternoon where we have some college football. And we go down to Chris. And each, as we've seen across college football, players are starting to use their voices to speak out against racial injustice. Linebacker Gra Gavin Graham for Texas State decided he wanted to hold something, some sort of march. So he came up with a unity march. They got together with police officers. They spoke at practice. He told me we have a great relationship with the police of San Marcos and surrounding areas. We wanted to do something that showed the unity and wasn't divisive. Sometimes we keep waiting for the perfect moment. Most of the time that never comes, so we felt now was the time to bring everyone together. Sideline throw, it's caught by Sharid. What I liked about Gavin Graham's initiative, his goal was to create dialogue. And that's what we need. Dialogue and unity and not more divisiveness. We live in a world where everything is binary. You're either for or you're against. For some, if you say Black Lives Matter, it means you don't like the police. No, that's not what this is about. For black people, they just want to know that their life matters. And, and that's what that means. And if you turn it into something else, which many people are trying to do, you don't get anywhere. And what Gavin Graham did is, hey, we can have both sides together. You can together. be on both sides. We can be on both sides. There is a gray area in the middle. Just because you're for one or you support one or you have family members who are on one side, it doesn't mean you can't be on the other. And if we're going to move forward, if we're going to evolve, if we're going to be better, we need more of that. We need more people like Gavin Graham who are seeking to unite and bring us together. McBride under pressure from McBride. Gets it off downfield. Incomplete. Oh, almost. Richard McBride bringing the pressure on Brody McBride or Brady McBride. 
Very, very fortunate. Again, this is what this young guy does, as Jake Spavital said in the first half. A little bit all over the place, but again, a throw off the back foot. The ball's up in the air. Jeremiah Haydell, number three, the intended target, almost makes the play. Almost makes the play and almost creates a pass interference uh, by having to stop and go up and get the ball. McBride back to the air. Eluding the pursuit and tornadoes across to about the 45 yard Number line. Two, Brady, McBride, Brady McBride is not a finished product, a quarterback, but <laughs> if anything, I tell you what, he's exciting. He is worth the entertainment dollar. He, there, there's a lot to be excited about because you see a skill set that can create a lot of problems for opposing defenses because the play's never over. He's going to be able to make some plays that you don't think he's going to make, but you're going to have to take the good with the bad as well. Four-man rush. Phillips off the edge. And that one skips fourth down. Jake Spavital has coached some pretty good quarterbacks in his time. Obviously, Johnny Manziel, Brandon Whedon, Geno Smith, Will Greer. What do you feel are the areas he's really going to work on with McBride as we move ahead? Not seeing ghosts, okay, as coaches would call it, and flushing the pocket when you know need to. It's okay to make some of those creative plays, but you still got to play within the structure of the offense, so don't make something bad that didn't need to be if you would have just hung in there. Oh, Kelly to punt it away to Gray. And this is a good kick. It's going to roll inside the 10. And special teams delivers for Texas State. SMU up seven and pinned deep. Quarterback Shane Bouchel did his part during this pandemic. He and his girlfriend Paige raised 50,000 for COVID relief in the Dallas area. It's unbelievable to have the time when you're when you're essentially in a bubble, when when you're insulated, to still be able to pull something like this off is is sensational. Sonny Dykes and this coaching staff raves about Bouchelle off the field. And they said during this downtime, he's been the model citizen. Yeah. He doesn't leave his house unless he's going to practice or he's working out. He keeps his teammates accountable. He's become, in a very short period of time, the face of a program and the face of a rebirth around SMU. And for a different generation, they still remember when SMU wasn't just a school buried in a non-Power 5 conference. They were one of the premier powers in all of college football. And last year kind of brought you back to that as Danny Gray picks up a nice chunk of yards on the outside. Tupo down again, number 55, was injured in the first half right before the teams went into the locker room. And on that play, you're right, boy, Danny Gray can run. They hit him on the little pop jet sweep. And he turned that corner in a hurry. Gray was a highly coveted junior college wideout, had offers from Auburn, LSU, Florida State, amongst others, as Tupo able to get back up. That play happens so quick. And once he hits the crease and is able to bounce the ball to the outside and turn the corner, got, got out some you out of a little bit of a hole there. Braden Stringer, a Texas Tech transfer, checking in for Tupo. Zach Spavital, the D coordinator at Texas State, was the linebackers coach at Texas Tech previously and had Stringer there. Bentley split wide, first and ten. Three-man rush. And incomplete, looking for the running back, Bentley, second and ten. That's a rare miss on an easy underneath throw from Shane Buchel. He's That should be pitch and catch for him. Normally it is. Look at him trying to warm up the chicken wing a little bit there as we... Get the third quarter underway. Texas State's done a good job defensively limiting those big plays through the air. They really have, and a lot of it's been because of pre-snap and post-snap looks that haven't made it easy for Shane Bouchelle. 
Bentley, meanwhile, has a couple of rushing touchdowns, carries to the 29, and third and long coming up. It's interesting, SMU has slowed down their tempo a little bit. They're in control of the game. I'm a little surprised that they've made this shift to running this clock down. This is kind of goes against type for them. Bouchelle gets rid of it quickly. He's got Gray. Helmet comes off. He'll have to come out of the game for a play. Flag is down. So if the helmet was knocked off because of a penalty, he can stay in. Fourth down if the penalty is against SMU, though. Personal foul. Targeting. Defense number 33. Previous play is under further review. So that's Braden Stringer who had come into the game for Tupo. He's 33 coming in from the side and at that point Gray is not a defenseless player. You have to remember that. But if you lead with the crown of the helmet it doesn't matter. And Correct. And it looked like Stringer came straight in with the crown of the helmet. Yeah, and Danny Gray saw saw the defender coming, so we don't have a defenseless issue. We've got a launching, uh, and, and to your point, crown of the helmet contact right here. Now, we were wrong in the first half on, on a targeting call that, to me, was targeting. When a helmet comes off, it becomes an off. <laughs> A little bit more difficult to overrule. Is the attack with the crown of the helmet? Yes. That's automatic. That's automatic. Targeting. But it was not on the first call. <laughs> Stringer's uh, politicking right there, but doesn't have access to the booth. Where the call's being determined. See, from that angle, the only thing you can't tell is does he get him with the shoulder yeah. first? Yeah. Right. The ruling of targeting on number 33 is confirmed. Number 33 is disqualified for the remainder of the contest. 15 yards will be added at the end of the run. First down. And remember, the crown of the helmet basically starts at the top of the face mask and goes all Correct. the way back. Correct. Now with the new rule, Stringer does not have to leave the field. He can stay out on the field. That is a new wrinkle yep. to the targeting rule. So the ejection stands. Please reset the game clock to nine minutes and eight seconds. And Stringer will have to sit out the first half of Texas State's next game, but he can remain on the sideline, which was not a privilege in the past. Listen, I understand the deterrent element to this, but I've never agreed with having to sit out another game. And listen, you you participated in the foul. You've been ejected from the game. When the game ends, the next week should start. So first down after the penalty. And here's Rashi Rice. B buttons across the 40. And close to the 30 of Texas State. These are those plays that you love as a quarterback. Snap the ball, get the ball out of your hand, throw the quick screen to the outside, and then let your skilled players do the rest. Get the big offensive lineman out there, making the blocks on those skill guys. Well executed. McDaniel, as SMU was going quickly. TJ McDaniel, three-star recruit out of high school, had offers from the likes of Clemson and Oregon. Bouchelle hit. Tipped and it's intercepted. Cornell Rogers. Finally tackled by McDaniel. Make a play, kid. What a great read and react. 
He's able to stab his foot in the ground and come forward and then gets his eyes up, makes the PBU, turns it into a pick, and that's just a wonderful reaction off of man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. And look at the pressure in the face of Shane Bouchelle as he's delivering this football. Don't be late to the sideline. If you're gonna be late to the sideline, you've got people in your face, you're gonna lose momentum on that football, and you're gonna be in danger of turning it over. Samuel Obiang brought the pressure. Another junior college transfer, one of many for Texas State. And Rodgers has his third career interception. He's starting at corner because Cam Winters, one of their top defensive players, is out for the season with a torn ACL. Yeah, and again, you're you're already thin. Your other corner, on other, your other side is your best player, but he's on the shorter end of things in terms of stature. So you need somebody to step up. And it's your first game, unprecedented circumstances. You haven't had the type of training camp that you're accustomed to having. You don't really know who your guys are yet. Now you have some guys come to the forefront and make some plays, as we saw right there. So Texas State gets the ball back right as SMU looked like it could put a little distance between them and the Bobcats. McBride to the air. Screen pass. Yikes. Jamarie Sharid able to make the catch. They call him K-Dot. <laughs> Do you understand the reference? Uh, you're going to have to enlighten me. <laughs> K-Dot is what Kendrick Lamar used to be called. <laughs> And Sharid is not a big fan of Kendrick Lamar's music, so his teammates, of course, said, you're K-Dot. Got to bust some chops. McBride will run. Hurdles a defender oh. and then ducks under another. And fortunate to duck under that defender as he almost got his head taken off. That was Cam Jones from the right side of, of the screen. Whoa. Number two in Maroon. Tell me that didn't remind you of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know this. He saw his life flash behind before his eyes. There's Calvin Hill. Boy, he has some shake and sizzle. Again, you just can't get a clean shot on him. And, he, and he's, he's slithery through the hole. He's short in stature, so it's kind of tough to find him behind the line of scrimmage like Darren Sproles. He's always a guy that just kind of pops through the crease. On first down, this is Hill. Spins free and finally wrestled to the ground by Chase Cromarty. Calvin Hill picks up 18 more. Again, credit this offensive line, uh, an area of concern, not only in depth, but in talent coming into this game. And they have shown vast improvement over a year ago. And SMU might be faster up front. They're not as big as they were a year ago. No, they're not. They're not. And they're in a lot more three down looks because they're not as big in more of a traditional four down look from a year ago. McBride slings one into the end zone. Spates holds on for a touchdown. What did we say, Anish? You got to take the bad with the good. This time, it was all good. He's still off to his right, still kind of throwing across his body, but that time he was far more on time and gave the intended target a chance to make a play. And what an answer by Texas State off of the interception, a much needed turnover by the defense, capitalizing with a score. Arona on for the PAT. Tied at 21. Brady McBride wanted to play quarterback since the first grade. He's got his team thinking upset in the season opener. McBride, there is a devil may care style to the Memphis transfer, but he is a coach's kid. And Jake Spavital told us he is cerebral. What jumps out to you? Because on the surface, he doesn't necessarily play like a coach's kid. Well, no, he takes risks, all right? He uh, clearly has instincts, okay? And, and like we've said, you're, you're gonna have to take the bad with the good. He's gonna make some spectacular plays, 
And as you stated in our break and ease, he's that, no, 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 no. Oh, hey, nice, nice play type of guy. And so, but we saw a throw just like that from the touchdown, almost exactly like it result in a turnover earlier in the game. So we got to temper some of those risks a little bit. He uh, does not lack confidence. No, 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 no. Gray from his own one. Tripped up at the 16. All right, drive recap for Texas State. Last time out, it all started with the defense. Yeah, the defense gets a much needed turnover. On the pass breakup, interception. Now all of a sudden you've got good field position. And guess what? Texas State once again up front running the football. Calvin Hill has been the go-to guy on the ground. And then Brady McBride, the first year starter, with the touchdown. And what's so important about that is you not only got the turnover, but you capitalized with points. You didn't just take the ball away for a couple of plays, end up punting it right back. Now Texas State's got momentum, they've got confidence, and SMU's backed up. Bentley to the 20, down to Chris. Well, we were wondering how the heat would play a role given the fact that they didn't have as many fall practices to get ready. I've seen on the SMU sidelines some guys stretching out, trying to get rid of some cramps. Seen some pickle juice being drank down there. So be interesting to monitor as that heat as someone is down right now for SMU as well. Yeah, you know, I think we all understand as uh, being a part of covering this sport and covering athletics that when you see those stretching techniques, somebody needs some more pickle juice. And so you got it, you know, you got it. It's hot. You're, you're hydrating throughout the week. You're certainly hydrating leading up to the game, but you're also going to be exhausted and you're going to be spent. And depth is a key for both of these teams. The longer the game goes, the higher the temperatures, the more people that can get affected. McDaniel cut back and suplex down at the 28-yard line. First down run for T.J. McDaniel. The run game was the big question offensively for SMU heading into the season. They had Bouchel, the best quarterback in the league, coming back. Had four offensive linemen returning. Still had a pretty good core of wide receivers, but they lost their top two backs. Daniel again to the outside. Nowhere to go. Give this Texas State defense credit. But Daniel's helmet pops off at the end of that play. And he will have to come out of the game by rule for one play. Well, Anish, I give this Texas State defense credit because they play hard, they run to the football, they leverage the ball inside out. And, and for a team that doesn't have a lot of depth, they're obviously in very, very good shape because they haven't shown signs of being worn down. A little bit surprised right there that that wasn't a personal foul call late. As T.J. McDaniels going down without his helmet takes a little bit of a late shot from a defender from Texas State. Empty look on second and nine. Bouchel pumps, has Rice, got a nice block. Danny Gray sealing the edge there, giving Rice a chance to pick up a few extra yards. Rice makes a terrific move after the catch to extend plays. Why it's so difficult. I mean, tackling in space is a nightmare on defense right now. Texas State slow getting set. Bentley close to midfield. And a ball might have come out. Texas State says it's a fumble, and they have it. Ruling on the field is that the runner was down. Runner was down. And now Bentley, who was cramping up a moment ago, gingerly walking off the field. Ooh, that ball mm. looks to be out before an elbow or knee goes down. You see Derek Ray there, number 93, is laying right next to the ball. Now, and there's here's no the whistle. Issue. Now, here's the issue. There was no immediate recovery in the aftermath of that fumble. 
Bouchelle downfield, completes to Robertson, reaching, and he's in for six. Credit SMU for understanding the situation, getting to the line of scrimmage, and snapping the ball to avoid any type of review stoppage. And now you've got the vertical throw, the deep ball, one of his better balls in his arsenal. So much touch and accuracy, and what an answer off of what could have been a reversed call. Yeah, well, the key component in that call, as you saw, you have to have a recovery, an immediate recovery in the aftermath of that fumble. In those plays where you're wondering, was he down, did the ball come out? You have to have an immediate recovery in the aftermath, and we didn't see that from the replay we saw. Derek Ray, number 93, the defensive lineman, sat there next to the ball, looked at it, and didn't grab for it, didn't attack the ball or pounce on the ball. And SMU on the very next play, it's Bouchelle to Robertson, which was the big connection a season ago on the deep ball. PAT by Nagar is good. Back to the fumble, Lukes. Yeah, and you're going to see, and it's a tough angle here. But the ball, it appears to have come out prior to, or right just prior to the right elbow going down and touching the ground. It would have been a close call, a tough call. But look, there's 93. You're going to see 93 in your screen. And he's part of stripping the ball out. He lays down right next to it. There's your ball, and nobody reacted. The other part of that, too, the call on the field, he was down. Watching it a second and third time. Maybe the elbow beat that it. That right elbow might have they been have. down. And again, if there is a little bit of doubt, the call on the field likely stands. But regardless, SMU, very next play, Bouchelle, the deep ball, they connect, and it's Robertson. Get up to the line in a hurry, take a shot. Well executed. Well, just good awareness all around. Five catches, 93 yards, and a touchdown for Reggie Robertson, Texas kid, DeSoto High School, who began his career at West Virginia. And that has been the formula for SMU, getting impact transfers originally from the great state of Texas. Labor Day, it's BYU and Navy doing some work. Primetime ESPN, Reese Davis, Kirk Herbstreet will be on the call. The Navy has been the most prolific rushing team in the country since 2008. The most rush yards, average yards per rush, and rushing touchdowns. And they are part of what will be a very good American <laughs> conference this year once again. UCF is the favorite to win the American. You've got Memphis, although with a new head coach, but they returned their quarterback. Cincinnati was in the title game last year. As Sturgis gets bumped out of bounds, you still can't sleep on SMU with all their returning firepower. Well, even with UCF having 10 players opt out and decide not to play, they still got some depth. They have athletes. They're going to be tough to contend with. You know what question is coming after this play? Okay. <laughs> McBride completes underneath. Third down coming up. If a team from the American runs to the table with two power fives not playing, can they get in the playoff? It's certainly the greatest opportunity. I think you'd have to run the table. You'd also have to have some 10 win teams other 10 win teams in the conferences we saw a year ago from the American. And listen, even with two power five conferences not playing, you're still going to have to have some help out of the other three that are. Cox bringing pressure. Hits McBride, who throws downfield. And it is a catch by Shereed. K Dot comes through. Moving on the field is a completed catch for a first down. What a tremendous effort, not only to secure the ball. See, now this is interesting. This whistle gets blown, and that fumble doesn't get blown. 
previous play is under further review. And Jake Spavitol must be wondering, wait a minute, who's the home team today? Yeah, no kidding. Let's take a look at it. We've got the chewed up ground rubber tire in the grass right before the white of the sideline. And you see it come up. It's like he completes the act of the catch. First and foremost, let's give some credit where credit's due. What an effort. What an effort of concentration. And if you watch, if you watch him near the end of this catch, watch him slow down prior to the sideline to ensure his feet are in. Because if he doesn't do that, he runs out of bounds catching this ball, and it's no catch. He literally slows down right there. That right foot appears to be in. He may have gotten the left foot in as a toe drag for good measure. That might be a catch on Sundays, too. Yep. One, two. Only needs one. I know. I, I love it. Really on the field is confirmed. Complete a catch for a first down. Credit Brady McBride on a terrific throw. A critical down. Your third down. You've got to convert. Somebody's got to come up and make a play. Jake Spavital has found out more about his football team in terms of the competitive element that he didn't know about because of some of the effort of some of these kids here today. Sturgis, flag down. Holding offense, number 50, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. And yeah, that's the center, Reese Jordan, the most experienced O-lineman for Texas State. This one's pretty glaring right there, the center, and he's going to twist with his arms again on the outside. And when your arms are on the outside and there's any tug of the jersey and you go to the ground, you're a prime candidate. It's not a big offensive line. Only one player, the right guard, Tate Heitmeyer, tips the scales above 300 pounds. Here's Calvin Hill on the delay and into the arms of Delano Robinson. Second down. McBride downfield, incomplete, nearly intercepted by Stevens, third and long. Brandon Stevens closing to the hip of the target. Times his jump really, really well and makes the play. Nice pass breakup over what would have been a huge game. He had a dozen PBUs last year, second in the conference. Where's that number 23? That's the number SMU hands out in honor of Jerry Levias, first African American to play in the Southwest Conference. Hill on third down gets a chunk back, but well shy of the marker. And it's fourth down. We have seen Jake Spavital go for it from this territory and the offense. Will they stay out on the field now, McBride heading to the sideline? They, they can't do this right now because they don't have enough gas on defense and they don't have enough depth. You got to punt this one away. This is the smart call at this time of the game. Um, and now you're going to rely on your defense to start being disruptive again, make some plays. I, I think the adjustment that SMU's made is let's not deal with Texas State's defensive front. We struggle with it. Let's throw the ball out on the perimeter, which they've done, and then take some deep shots. This bounces out of bounds near the 20-yard line. The ACC begins play next weekend, as does the Big 12. The SEC starts September 26th. 
Conference USA and the Sun Belt opened to the season this past Thursday, and SMU, the first team in the American to play this season, not playing this year, the Big Ten, the Pac-12, the Mountain West, and the MAC. At least they won't play in the fall. Plans to play in the spring, although we have not really seen a plan of how that would look or work. It sounds good, doesn't it? It sure does. Hey, kind of gives you the warm and fuzzy feeling. Drags you away from a lot of the negativity surrounding the conference. The reality of it? Yeah, I don't know. On the reality of this game, it's been a surprise to say the least, Luke's. It's been a surprise, I think, to both teams. Number one, Texas State might be a little bit better than they thought they were going to be. Their players even realizing that. And SMU realizing maybe we can't just put our pants on and go out there. Well, we've got a four-quarter game. One stands the left. SMU leads by seven. Rashi Rice got the moves. Time for today's Aflac trivia question. Aflac. With Lincoln Riley turning 37 today, his brother is the OC at SMU. Who was the last head coach to win a national championship after starting the season younger than age 40? Give the people at home a minute. All right, we'll give them a, give them a chance. You want to drop a hint? We think we may have come up with it during the break. And you could have guessed two different people at this school, too. And that's right. Shane Bouchelle to throw. He's got Tyler Page, the veteran receiver, dragging tacklers. And picks up a first down. The Jordan Mask eventually brought him down. All right, who's your answer? Like Danny Ford. Former Clemson head coach. No, Bob Stoops. Bob Stoops. Wow. Man. I think Danny Ford was, what, 33, 34 when he won with Homer Jordan? Bouchelle downfield. There's the deep ball. Hits Rice in stride. Uh, you said it at the start of the fourth quarter while we were in a break. SMU needs to go to the air game. They need to go to the air game, and they need to do it quickly. They need to push the pace and the tempo and wear out Texas State. This is a beautiful throw down the sideline, right in the whole shot between the corner and the safety. That ball's got to be thrown right in that area to have a chance. But again, Texas State's depth, this is where your depth starts to wear you out a little bit. And the tempo and the approach from SS SMU can help aid in that. 39 yards for Rice, his second career 100-yard game. McDaniel bulldozes inside of the 20. So right now, if I'm, if I'm SMU, getting right up to the line of scrimmage and I'm snapping the ball. Depth is the one area where SMU has a decided advantage today. Let, they're letting Texas Tech catch their breath. Excuse me, te Texas State catch their breath here. Another injured player for Texas State. It's Grid Isidore, one of the nickelbacks. Time out for an injured player. Time out on the field. Tom Luganbill had a stake in that game, didn't you? <laughs> Finished my undergrad at EKU and went to grad school at Marshall. <laughs> TJ McDaniel inside the 10 and tornadoes down to the six. Flag is down. Personal foul, face mask, defense, half the distance to the goal line, first half. Tack out a few extra yards. Yeah, you get a lunging player there. It's Christian Taylor, number 18, the linebacker, reaching in, He's grabbing whatever he could. Two tight ends, first and goal from the three. Bouchelle naked bootleg, and he'll coast in. A 
white flag at the very end of the play. Legal formation, offense, more than four players in the backfield. Five yard penalty, repeat first down. He got the perfect play call. That's going to drive a coach crazy. Oh, absolutely, because on that particular play call, you're either getting back to the line of scrimmage or you're scoring. Okay? So you've got it all set up. But you know what? Early season, first game, you're going to have some alignment issues. You've got some new personnel. But also the quarterback, too, that's, you know, Shane's senior. He's been around it. He's got to be responsible for some of that as well, making sure everybody's lined up accordingly. First and goal from the eight. McDaniel searching for running room and tripped up. Maybe a yard, second and goal. See the difference in that play right there between Ulysses Bentley. Is that might have been a touchdown with Bentley. The shake, the wiggle, the ability to bounce the ball and the cut back to the outside and get into the end zone. But there's two different types of backs. We've seen McDaniel get into trouble when he tries to go east-west. Correct. Yeah, he's not going to be a guy that's going to outrun you. Bouchelle wants six, broken up, terrific play on the ball by DeJordan Mask, and it's third and goal. Woo. Just great positioning on the football, and credit Robertson for getting the ball out of the hands, out of the hands of the defender and Mask. Really well defended play. Boy, that penalty was huge. Look at where we're at right now. Remember, SMU's kicker, Chris Nagar, has not attempted a field goal in college. McDaniel powering through the ball, comes out! And Texas State comes up with it, wow! plane of the end zone. Zion Childress falls on it. It's a touchback and Texas State gets the ball back down seven. So you almost have an interception. You're hanging in there. You get a touchdown call back on SMU for a penalty. Not only was that a fumble that didn't cross the plane, the ball landed in the field of play after it came out. What a huge play for Texas State on defense. The last three plays, sort of a Cliff Notes version of this game. Absolutely. You know, you, it's almost, you'll hear the saying, most games are lost, not won. Well, why is that? Because somebody makes more errors than the other team. So that that's one of the reasons, while SMU may be more talented, may have more depth, they're allowing Texas State to hang around due to errors. Ball is out again. But Texas State able to cover it up. Sturgis recovered his own fumble. Down to Chris. Well, that Texas State defense battling despite having issues with cramping the majority of that drive. They didn't have their starting defensive end, Jordan Revels, or their safety, Brendan Looper, because of the heat and the cramping out here. Still battling. Yeah, they're down two linebackers. Tupo's been injured. Stringer rejected for targeting. This is Graham. Pinball wizard, and he lost the ball. What is going on? It lands in the arms of Shevin Callaway, and SMU gets it back. Chase Cromarty, believe, forced the fumble 18 as he comes, and you can kind of see it happening. A completed catch, subsequent fumble recovered by the defense. First down, SMU. Good play on the football. You make the initial tackler miss. Another two miss, and then there's 18 and you can feel it. You're sitting there going, tuck the ball away, tuck the ball away. So by my count, we've had a fumble on three straight plays now. Correct. Three straight plays. And see, that's just a killer. If you want to have a chance and you see the bottle service off of the turnover, got the confetti, I'm still waiting on the balloons. But if you want to have a chance to pull an upset, to beat somebody, that maybe is more talented than you, and you presented an opportunity off a turnover, you can't give that ball back to the other team. 
SMU takes over at the Bobcats 44. Bouchelle checks down to McDaniel. And we finally have a play that ends without a fumble. <laughs> Some violent pendulum swings in the last minute. We're in the fourth quarter. Again, teams have not had the practice time that they usually do. Some of this sloppy play, is that a result of conditioning? Not so much conditioning maybe as it is the amount of live work you might normally get. You know, you're trying to preserve your team. You're limiting contact a little bit. You're going to go through your normal position drills, and, of course, you're going to have fumble recovery drills. You're going to have forced fumble drills. You're going to talk to your kids about the importance of four points of pressure in securing the football as a ball carrier. But I think a lot of it has to do with how often have you gone live, how often have you been in tackling drills, and how much have you limited that in this circumstance of knowing you're not going to have all of your best bodies all the time. After the first down run by McDaniel, he gets it once more, this time going east-west and picks up three. TJ McDaniel north of 100 yards today. Both of his career 100-yard games have come against Texas State. Against the Bobcats last year, 159 yards, three touchdowns, and it was after that game, that was his collegiate debut, that the coaches decided you will no longer redshirt. That's what we all love about the redshirt rule. Let's test them out, see what they can do. If they can help us, we'll know, and we'll move on. Play clock down to four. Bouchelle slings it to Page, and he's driven back as he crosses the 25, third down. <laughs> Zion Childress there on the tackle. Good open field tackle. Page outstanding in the classroom. 3.9 GPA in finance. Sets up a third and one. And to Merrick Williams into the game at running back. Williams gets the call, surges ahead. Mm. And let's see if he got it. This is going to be close. He had some initial penetration in the backfield, and he had to leap to potentially convert this. He did not get it fourth and one. Again, we're calling the game off a monitor. We don't have that yellow line that we're used to having today. So fourth down, and remember, Chris Nagar, the kicker for SMU, a former walk-on at Texas. He was the backup kickoff specialist and took over punting duties late last year as the measure, and he's short. Nagar has never attempted a field goal. Do you just go for it here on fourth and short, or do you try for three to go up two scores? I would I would go up two scores. I would get the points on the board. They've been hard to come by in the second half. Because, again, a lot of the plays Texas State has made on offense has been a part of the run game and a big play here or there. It hasn't necessarily been about sustained drives resulting in points. A decision for Sonny Dykes. They went for it 30 times on fourth down last year. Offense staying out on the field. They'll go for it. Bouchelle will hand it off. Granson driven back. And judging from the spot, Ooh. they're not going to give him forward progress. It looks like it's going to be Texas State football. This is going to be close. Let's see if we get another measurement. Nevertheless, what a stand along the defensive front. Understand, this is a shorter, more undersized group, but they play with leverage. They get under your pad level, and you can't move them. 
And this is going to be awfully close. Judging from the initial spot, he looked short. Wow. Sonny Dykes rolled the dice. Snake eyes. Could have got himself some points. Instead, gives the ball back to the other team. Texas State still has life. Memphis, the defending champion of the American Conference last year, beat Cincinnati in the title game. Missed opportunities for SMU in the second half. Shane Bouchelle threw an interception while the team was driving for a score. SMU fumbled into the end zone. And the very last play, fourth down and short, they were stopped basically at the 20-yard line. And Texas State keeps getting these extra lifelines. And it's kept them in the game at the end of the day. And credit Texas State, they've made their plays too when they've had to and when their back's been against the wall. Here's McBride. And he just throws that away. Smart play. Well, here are the miscues by SMU in the second half. Here's the pick again inside the Bobcat 25 yard line. Then McDaniel, so close to the end zone, fumbles. And then on fourth down, Kylan Granson. Blitz picked up beautifully. And to the 30-yard line goes Drew Jackson, who began his career at Washington State. Nice pitch and catch there, by the way, from, from Brady McBride, because he saw his feet set, confident. Uh, was decisive in getting the ball out. I think that's what Jake Spavital eventually wants to get to with him along with the athletic plays. McBride gets rid of it quickly. And Haydell tackled for a loss. You know, you go back to that fourth down conversion that failed for SMU. That's where you miss a Cayman Freeman. Sure. A big power back who last year would have come in and he gets you those short yardages. They don't really have that element that they rely on, so you handed the ball off to a tight end. To a tight end to try and get that big body. And Ulysses Bentley has been on the sideline dealing with some cramping issues, so your most dynamic back hasn't been able to get on the field for you. McBride will step up. Throws on the run. Flag down. It's intercepted. Armani Johnson came up with the pick. There is a penalty marker. It's like a game of hot potato right here. You win. No, you take it back. No, you take it. I don't want it. You take it. Very, very fortunate there. Brady McBride able to flush the pocket and extend the play. But you've got to be able to come up with a positive result. And sometimes that means throwing the ball away. Sometimes it means tucking and running it. But you can't throw it to the other team. Very fortunate there to get that offsides call. Not much going on for Sturgis. Third down now for Texas State. Seven and a half to play in regulation. Bobcats need the 41. McBride going deep, and he airmailed his target, fourth and six. Seemed to be a little bit of a miscommunication out there between he and Jeremiah Hado, who has been really one of his go-to guys. Looks like he's going to be a promising playmaker. Six-foot senior. See him off the ball on the outside, getting press. 
just can't get off a press. Well played on the defensive back end there by LSU in the secondary. Excuse me, by SMU. So the Australian Seamus O'Kelly to punt. Tyler Page across the 40 into Bobcat territory. A nice return by the seasoned senior SMU with the ball in Texas State territory. BYU and Navy doing work. First meeting since 1989 when Ty Detmer was the Cougars quarterback. We know Navy can run the ball. SMU has struggled to do that consistently today. Ulysses Bentley left with what appeared to be cramps. He has not come back in. And that was their big question mark going into the season, the running game. Yeah, they knew what they had in the offensive line, but how could they sustain consistency in the run game? Now, Robertson gets a little little pitch. That's a, that counts as a pass. Okay, we, we get it. But really, it's, it's between the tackles. Um, and Bentley not being in the game has limited the explosiveness of the run game here in the last couple of series. But I like the approach right here, Anish, because now is when you've got to expose some of that depth. And Garrett Riley, you see the offensive coordinator, first year taking over for Rhett Lashley. We gotta wear these guys out. We gotta run the ball, keep it between the numbers. Don't go out of bounds. You have more depth than you're the better team. It feels as if SMU has had three, four opportunities here to put this game away. Absolutely. But they've made errors that have kept Texas State in it. McDaniel. Looked like he was going to get thrown for a loss. Turns that into something, a couple. And up goes to number 25, T.T. McDaniel, tackle made by number 96, Kingsley on now, the big concern maybe for SMU moving forward, they don't play TCU next week. We'll get into that later. TCU had some positive COVID tests, so that game has been put off for now. But if you struggle to run against Texas State, what about against other teams in a pretty good American conference? Now, Bouchelle can do this. Incomplete for Page. Flag is down, and this could be DPI. Appears to have been a late flight. They looked like every right, play's cleared, ball's incomplete. Defenders felt good about it. There's no ball for pass interference. The ball was uncatchable. Was that uncatchable? Let's see where this ball lands. There was a, a DPI defensive pass interference early in the first half where I wasn't sure if the ball was catchable either. Oh, that ball's catchable. That ball was catchable. Wow. That ball at least landed. That ball at least landed in bounds. The one in the first half landed four yards out of bounds. I yeah. mean, we saw. Haydell hey, bring one in with one hand. Page wasn't that far away from doing so. It's the first game for the officials as well. So third and eight now. McDaniel splits wide. Four-man rush. Bouchel gets rid of it. He's picked off. Grin Isidore with the interception. And SMU turns it over again. Oh boy, you talk about a game of inches, a pass interference call that was wiped out. Wow. And again, pressure burst the pipe. You've got an A-gap rusher between the center and the guard right in the face of Shane Buchel. He ends up being late to the check down and throws an inaccurate pass. And that was what happened when Buchel threw his first interception. Correct. It started with pressure. Starts with pressure. When you can get into people's face, their eyes come down, it alters their line of sight, alters their timing, then your accuracy is going to be affected. 
This one floated out into the flat. Sturgis across the 45-yard line. So see, come right up the middle. Unblocked defender. Nice job backing off off the hit so you don't get any potential roughing the passer or targeting call. And now, again, can Texas State capitalize on some of the gifts that have been afforded to them here in the fourth quarter? Kenny Haynes brought the pressure. Sturgis stood up. Now Richard McBride, Mike Linebacker, leading tackler a season ago, and it's third down, two to go. To Texas State, your offensive line on second and third and short situations has come up big for you all night long. McBride backpedaling throws, broken up by Stevens, intended for Graham, and it's fourth and two. And does Jake Spavital roll the dice? May not have a choice here. Again, we talked about this plus territory right at the end of the third quarter. I think he made the smart call there to punt it. They're going to go for it. I like to call three timeouts left. Can you execute? McBride throws on the run, nearly intercepted. It's incomplete. Turnover on downs. Brandon Crossley nearly picked it off. Still enough football to be played. SMU needs to put the game away on this next drive. What Ryan Silverfield won't have is Kenny Gainwell, one of the best running backs in the country, opting out of the season. T.J. McDaniel using the stiff arm as if to say, get off my plane. Flag is down at the 30. Going to get a face mask at the end of this one. Right at the very end is McDaniel's engaging in the stiff arm. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 20, 15 yard penalty, first down. It's on Looper. Defensive players always say, well, how come the offensive guys allowed to do that? <laughs> well, technically they're not. Never called though. First and 10 from the 20, McDaniel, 125 yards rushing, including a touchdown, but he also fumbled into the end zone. McDaniel picks up three, maybe four, second down. SMU is in the best possible position now because they can run the ball, take time off the clock in between plays, and are in field goal position right now. In this quarter alone, SMU had a ball fumbled into the end zone by McDaniel. They had a touchdown taken off the board on a penalty. Denied on fourth down from the Texas State 20, and through another interception. McDaniel to the 15, it sets up third and five. Smart heady play by McDaniel. They're not bouncing that play to the outside, just sticking in, get inside. Don't get near near the sideline and keep that oh, clock running. First charge timeout, Texas State. This will be a 30 second timeout. Jake Spavital elects to use a timeout. He's got two left, 2.30 to go. And really, T.J. McDaniel forced him to use it by making the play. As you may have seen on the graphic, we briefly touched on it. SMU's game next Friday at TCU has been postponed. It won't be played as scheduled due to positive COVID tests from TCU's side. 
Now the Big 12 has staggered its schedule so in case there are postponements you can make up games but as of now SMU and TCU don't really match up on a bye week and the Big 12 has said that its championship game would be December 12th or the 19th. Mm -hmm. So you could potentially have a week in between where you could play, but if TCU or SMU is playing in a conference championship, do you run that risk? Why play in that right. game? No doubt. And that's a rivalry game. Bouchelle under pressure, throws it up, and he's lucky that landed incomplete. He just sort of threw it into space Granson was there it's incomplete fourth down I just don't see the need for the call you just stop the clock for Texas State you run the football right there the clock's running and you're forcing them to like to use another timeout now I understand that he wasn't under duress and could have made an accurate throw it's probably a touchdown but still there's too much risk in that call and all you've done now is stop the clock first career field goal attempt for Chris Nagar, the grad transfer from Texas. And he drills it. And SMU finally goes up two scores. Yeah, and they needed to. And again, ensuring that they don't go backwards and keep themselves in scoring position no matter what happened at the end of that drive. NBA playoff doubleheader tomorrow on ABC. First countdown at three. Then it's Bucks Heat. Miami could go for the sweep of the top team in the East. The Rockets look to go up 2 0 on the Lakers. James Harden, 36 points last night in Houston's game one win. Texas State now down 10, 220 to go in the fourth. Even if the Bobcats lose this game, Jake Spavital today has infused a little bit of optimism into his program. There's no question. I think the kids have confidence, too. Um, they've made some plays, made enough mistakes to not win the game, but enough plays to stay in it. And they're clearly a much deeper football team, despite some of the players that were lost today due to the the positive COVID test and some of the contact tracing, which is going to affect everybody in college football, depending on the week, no matter what. Now some verbal jabs near the 20. And Sonny Dykes will be the first to tell you, SMU can absolutely play better. Uh, you didn't get the best effort from the Mustangs. I saw SMU a few times last year. When they're humming, mm -hmm. it, it's as fun a team to watch as yeah. there is in college football. Uh, they just weren't in sync, and they had some chances here in the second half to really put this game away turned it over had some costly penalties it certainly wasn't for lack of not moving the football it was what would happen at the end of said drives that would keep Texas State in this game but I think I think Jake Spavital is on the right track it's only year two you've got tremendous challenges obviously with what's going on in our country right now with COVID and, and how that's you know affecting everybody's roster Graham on the slant. Now, this is still a relatively new FBS program. Yep. Now, this was a power at the lower levels. Only the ninth season in the FBS. They have not had a winning season since 2014. McBride takes off and runs right into Delano Robinson. <laughs> You know, there's a spot there, too, where McBride, again, has to know his role on this team. Tyler Vitt, who was the starter last year and who is supposed to be the backup, he's in contact tracing. Yep. The last thing McBride wants to do right now is get hurt. Well, yeah, and that's the last thing the coaching staff wants to see happen, too. Nice throw on the outside there. Drew Jackson. Following our game, Arkansas State, another school out of the Sun Belt against Memphis. Offside, defense, number 97. Penalties declined. Result of play was a first down. Arkansas State, Memphis will be an 8 10 kick. Our friends Bob Wischusen, Dan Orlovsky, Colt Kublik will have the call for you. Against a three man rush. 
That is Sharid K. Dot with a first down. Nice throw and catch. You see him that time in the pocket, remain in the pocket, didn't need to flush, makes the throw on time. Listen, you got a minute six here. You still got two timeouts left. You're going to have to take shots into the end zone here pretty quickly, but you could give yourself a chance with some execution here in the next play or two. First charge timeout, SMU. This would be a 30 second timeout. Timeout by SMU. We have a Sunday baseball doubleheader tomorrow. First on ESPN2, it's Christian Yelich and the Brew Crew wrapping up their three-game set against Francisco Lindor and the Tribe. Then in the Sunday night game, Cardinals and Cubs. Yeah, you know, the fourth game of a five-game series. Cardinals went, what, two weeks without playing because of positive COVID tests. It's been that kind of season in sports. Listen, the team that's going to be able to manage this and deal with this the best at the end of the season when you're already dealing with depth, issue, depth issues and, and, and injuries. And remember, every conference has different protocols and different rules. For example, at Texas State in, in the Sun Belt, even if a kid has been attributed to contact tracing but tests negative, he's out 14 weeks. If they test him 14 five, days, 14 days, excuse me, if they test him five days later, he tests negative again, he still can't come back and play. McBride off his back foot and broken up by Armani Johnson. I don't see a flag. Third down. Pardon me, second and ten. Quick release, and it's Drew Jackson. They like Jackson. Third stop after beginning his career at Wazoo, then Tyler Junior College, originally from Garland, which is not far from Dallas. I was just going to say, Texas State, this will be a 30 second timeout. Prior to that last play call, they can throw the ball to the inside, but they need to throw it to the inside downfield. That didn't necessarily help them right there. You could take your shots down the field like they did to the outside, but you need to get close to the end zone for two reasons. You may choose to kick a field goal here, keep more time on the clock, all right, and then go to your onside kick game. At the old uh, Madden ploy. There you go, the old Madden ploy. <laughs> now, so at what point do you try that? Now? If you don't convert without question. McBride chased and sacked by Cox. And it's fourth down, and that's the last thing Texas State needed. Yeah, the lone returning starter, Turner Cox, off the edge, off of this SMU defense from a year ago. And he's just, he ends up making a play off the edge. And McBride this time, he's made a lot of people avoid, a lot of people miss throughout the day. Couldn't make Cox miss there. Charge timeout, Texas State. This would be a 30 second timeout. Bobcats, just a killer. That's a killer. Bobcats out of timeouts, and that's twice today. Go back to the very first drive. McBride took a sack that mm -hmm. pushed back a field goal attempt. Think and about what that would mean right now. Yeah, well, it would be 31-24 right now um, because that field goal had eventually ended up being missed. Yeah. And again, these are, we're in game one. You're going to move forward. You've got a first-year starter at quarterback. You're going to have tremendous game tape teaching moments for McBride and, and his head coach and, and, and coordinator, Jake Spavital, to, to have talks and discussions about game management, about situational awareness, where you are on the field. Spavitel is going to have to be a uh, lion tamer. Yes, a bit, uh, a, uh, but you don't want to take his instincts away. Right. Got to be a happy medium there. Field goal try by Arona from 47 is good. It's 31-24. Let's check in with Matt Barry.
Now Texas State has to line up for an onside kick. 45 seconds, no timeouts. Well, two issues with why they don't have timeouts. The sack forced them to use one, and then the underneath inside throw where they got tackled in bounds forced them to use their other. So had they taken the shot on that second down like they did on first down downfield, you either stop the clock or you score. And so they, again, other moments that they can build upon because you'd love to be able to at least have one timeout here if you're to recover this onside kick. Jacob Bates to attempt the onside kick. Oh, well, I've got Bates with Arona, so who's going to kick it? <laughs> Second charge timeout, SMU. So SMU, SMU calls, calls timeout. a timeout. Okay, now what do we do if they're showing two kickers? Well, and now we'll see what Texas State does if they just go to your traditional look. But clearly that was something SMU and their scouting efforts had not seen from Texas State previously, weren't prepared to defend it. Hey, listen, you can't, you can't screw this moment up if you're SMU. Get out of this game by making sure that you are sound in your alignment. And if that means calling a timeout, so be it. Only one attempted onside kick last year for the Bobcats. They did not recover. Thirty seven Arona lined up closest to the bottom and Bates a few feet off the right hip of Verona. Arona kicks it. It takes a bounce and it's recovered by SMU. That's a shame you didn't get the second hop, the hop that gets the ball up in the air. When the ball stays low in an onside kick situation, you have that chance to trap it. Never got a chance for your cover team to run underneath it. Kylan Granson recovers it, and SMU a couple of kneel downs away. Yeah, that's a shame right there, just in terms of, that's so tough on the onside kick. You gotta get the elevation of the ball on that second hop. And just didn't have it that opportunity. Anish Shroff, Tom Logan, Bill, Chris Budden on this first real Saturday of the college football season. Arkansas State Memphis coming up next. SMU was a three touchdown favorite today. And Texas State pushed them almost to the brink. Really, the Bobcats did well rushing the ball in the first half. They mm -hmm. got away from that a little, a little bit, bit in the second half. Yeah, and listen, there's going to be a lot of adjustments made. There'll be a lot of improvement between week one and week two. Unfortunately for SMU, that's not going to come for a couple of weeks. But a lot of stuff for both of these coaching staffs to coach over. For second year head coach Jake Spavital, a loss, but one you can build off as you're building a program. SMU has heightened expectations after a 10-win season a year ago. Sonny Dykes now has his team's attention. There's going to be a teaching moment with no game next week. A teaching moment with a win behind it. The Mustangs prevail 31-24 as SMU tries to follow up their best season in more than three decades. Time to get you out to the Liberty Bowl. Bob with shoes and on the call. Arkansas State and Memphis. It's the Sun Belt and the American once again.